Someone in the comments was asking how I got my first paying job. And I thought it was a good question. I said to make a video on it, so here is this video. Now, my first paying job, as with most people, I'm going to negate because I got paid 50 pounds to shoot someone's birthday party. And anyone with a camera who knows someone who has a party will get this sort of work. I think more what they were asking for was, how did I get my first commercial job? How did I get my first real paying sort of job? Now, my first ever proper job, commercial job, was a billboard campaign. And that was for a company called Premier Drums in the UK. They make drum kits. I think they did The Who, um, Iron Maiden, all these big bands. And I'm going to explain to you how I got that job. I wasn't looking for it. This is the first thing to say. At the time, I was a music photographer. Didn't have a studio, didn't own lights. But I'd, I'd finished shooting a wedding with my mate Hitesh because that's how I was paying the bills at the time. It's not my cup of tea, but I had to do it for five years to make money. So that's what I did. And after this wedding, my friend said, Kasabian are playing at this party. Why don't you come take some pictures? So I turned up to this party in a full suit, having just shot a wedding. And I walked up to the door staff and went, I'm here to photograph Kasabian. And they marched me backstage which wasn't what I was expecting, but because I was the only person in about a one mile radius wearing a suit, they seemed to think that I knew what I was doing. Anyway, I got these brilliant backstage photos of Kasabian, got them partying, got them some post portraits, got some really good live stuff. I think Zach Starsky was there, um, drummer from the Stereophonics was there, and they all did these different like collaborations of bands on stage. I got some cool pictures. Now, up until that point, I'd been shooting a lot of local bands and any big bands that came to Leicester. That was my thing at the time. I thought I enjoyed it. Turns out it just gave me minor anxiety. But I digress. I put a blog post up about these and everybody shared my blog post. Now, Instagram was just launching around this time. I wasn't on it. This is all Facebook related. Facebook back then was usable. It was, it was good for this sort of thing. Now, completely useless. So my website, put it on the blog, put in 20, 30 pictures on there shared it out and somebody shared it with the head of marketing from the company. I then get a phone call from the company saying, we want you to shoot our campaign like you shot that. We want what you're doing over here. And I said, brilliant. They asked me to send, me, send them my studio address and all the rest of it. And I said, no problem. I'll get it over to you in the next day. I'm away at the moment. And off we went. Now, I was lying. I wasn't away. I just didn't have a studio. So I phoned up my manager at the time who was looking after me. And I said, look, Angie, I need a studio because I told them I've got a studio. We found a studio space. I took a lease straight away, which was blind leading the blind a little bit perhaps, but there we go, it worked out in the end. I then hired my friend Paul because he knew how studio lights worked and he owned studio lights. I then hired a lens because I didn't own a decent lens and we shot the campaign. Now, I can't remember how much I charged back then, but it wasn't enough is the short of it. And uh, the images were way better than what I charged, but it was my first job and I was absolutely terrified. We had some famous drummer come down. We'd built a set. We got the drum kit in. We got the stylist in with the suits. And we came up with a really nice image. I'll see if I'm allowed to put it in here somewhere. I'll put it in here and see if it gets hold off. And that was my first job. Now, I'm going to sort of backtrack a bit now and break it down as to the steps that I think helped me get my first job. Now, first of all, I consistently put work out there. And I mean consistently. Every single day I was going to a gig to shoot it. I'd got an arrangement with every music venue in the city where I was allowed and free to shoot and they could use them on social media or whatever it may be and they gave me a few drinks and all the rest of it. Great deal. I had a blast, met loads of cool musicians, got to go on tour with a few of them. It was a great time. So I was doing this and I was churning out this work over and over and over again. I'd got a real style going on. I was shooting everything on like a 17 millimeter lens, classic 1970s, Annie Leibovitz, Rolling Stone style, black and white, heavy contrast, motion blur in the images. I'll see if I can get some to ping it whilst I'm talking about this. I was really into that look. And the backstage shots, they were all 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter primes, F1.8, F2, you know, real classic Rolling Stones heyday era photography. There's some wicked like behind the scenes shots. I was shooting for the local magazines, shooting all the magazine covers for any music magazines. And that was like what I was doing, but I was relentlessly putting it out there. And I had a consistent style. My voice or my idea of what the style was, was very much, this is how music photos should look. They all look like this. Now, luckily that was a good taste and that was a taste that people bought into. And I was getting quite a lot of work shooting local bands. It was actually my full-time career for a while shooting musicians before I couldn't take another band turning up going, we've lost the drummer or we can't get there. We've lost our van, whatever it may be. It drove me insane in the end. But the point of this is this, 
the way that I got my first job was by relentlessly working under my own finances, under my own steam, and putting work out there until people went, we keep seeing this person, we need to work with him. We need to have him come here and do this for us. This is what he's saying music photography should look like. We want some of that. And it's as simple as that. Now, I probably did it for four years before I got my first real job. You know, it's not something you do for a few months and go, well, where's my clients gone? You need to consistently and persistently put that work out there, share your voice. And it's fine to change style and meander a bit, but until you get to where you think the right style is and you start churning that out again and again and again and again, nobody's really going to take notice. You just get lost in a sea of photographers. There's loads of photographers, mediocre, average, doing trick shots, doing the trendy stuff at the moment with the shoelaces coming out, the strings or the tennis ball with the water. Nobody cares about that. Pick a style that you truly believe in and that you truly think is the way that it should look. For me, I shoot food the way that I think food should look. There is no other option for me. This is the best food photography style. Granted, I could do with some work and improving, but my actual like mindset of where we're going with this food photography, that is the best. That is what it should look like for me. Now, someone else would come in and go, well, I think it should look like this. This is my interpretation of food. This is my style of shooting it. And that is brilliant. And that is why every photographer has their own little lane that they go in, even within the same thing. I shoot it this way, they shoot it that way, and they shoot it their way. All good, different things, different horses or different courses. The client will choose the right photographer for that particular assignment to put it through their style, their point of view, and their perspective on food or whatever the job may be. So if you are looking for your first job, you just need to be consistent and just keep putting work out there. Instagram is the best platform at the moment. That is what you should be using. You should be using the grid as a portfolio, the stories to show behind the scenes personality, how you're doing it, what you're doing. Don't be afraid to share your secrets or anything like that. I share everything I do. No one's going to steal your work because if they need to know how you're doing it, they're not at that level yet. And by the time they get to it, they'll be wanting to know something else. You don't have to worry about competition in that sense. What you should be worrying about is finding your taste, your style and your perspective and your perception of how everything should look. So I hope that's of use to you. If you enjoyed this video, do hit subscribe. And hopefully by the time this one's gone out, we're almost back to normal posting again after the holiday period of gluttony and drinking. I'll see you all soon.